Good morning. Welcome to St. Vincent Basilica Parish. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Altar server training for new recruits is scheduled for next Saturday, September 11th, beginning at 1 p.m. The Discovering Christ course begins Tuesday, September 14th. The deadline for registration is this Tuesday, September 7th. Both in-person and Zoom options are available. There are cards with detailed information in the pews. The Diocese of Greensburg's Men's Conference, The Well, is Saturday, September 25th at Christ Our Shepherd Center. This in-person event features speakers, prayer, worship, and personal testimonies. For more information and to register, visit our diocesan website. Many thanks to all who donated, worked at, or patronized our parish festival in July. Please see today's bulletin for the impressive grand total that was raised. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops have asked for a special collection this weekend to help the people of Haiti. An August 14th earthquake caused catastrophic damage across one of the poorest countries in the world. A basket marked Special Collection for Haiti is near the main entrance of the Basilica. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Regular offertory envelopes may be dropped into the container located near the main entrance of the Basilica. Please turn off all cell phones and all other electronic devices. Presiding at this Mass is Father Dan. Our opening hymn is number 433, Amazing Grace, number 433, found in the Breaking Bread hymnal. Good morning and welcome. Let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, now let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Christ. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steep. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of Decapolis. And people brought him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay 
his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Is anyone here this morning self-sufficient? I'm not. I need people and I need God. No one is really self-sufficient. We can all think of people who have enriched our lives in one way or another, friends, family, who've helped to bring the best out in us, who have helped us to become all that God wants us to be. We cannot really be all that God wants us to be without the support and help of others. There is so much that we can receive only in relationship with others, and we all realize deep down that we are far from being self-sufficient. In the gospel this morning, a deaf and dumb man is brought to Jesus by others. There were obviously people in this man's community who were looking out for him and they brought him to someone they believed could be of help to him. They led him to a place, to a person that he certainly could not have reached by himself. They were a life-giving presence in his life. And that kind of scene is repeated many, many times in the Gospels. Another example is that passage where a paralyzed man was brought into the presence of Jesus by a group of his friends even though it meant that they had to create a hole in the roof of the house where Jesus was staying. They stopped at nothing to bring their friend into a healing presence that he would never be able to reach on his own. Scenes like that are repeated in the lives of people today. There are many people who take time out of their days to do this. They become the hands and legs the ears and eyes of those who are seriously disabled. In all kinds of other ways, he will take on the role of those people in the gospel reading. He brought the blind and deaf man to Jesus. There are many who do this right in their own homes, within the confines of their own home or their own area. They are a life-giving presence for others and are present to them in ways that enable them to live fuller lives. We all have the capacity to make life richer for others. God's creative and life-giving spirit is latent in all of us. To the extent that we are in touch with that creative spirit of God within us, wonderful things can happen through us and the lives of others can be greatly enriched. The gospel reminds us that we need others to help us become our better selves, our best selves, which is the person that God desires us to be. We need compassionate, concerned, and creative people. The God in whom we believe is a creator God, and his work never ceases. Creation is ongoing, creation is continuous. We are all called to be channels of God's ongoing creative work. God desires to work through us in creative ways so that the lives of others are enriched. The man that people brought to Jesus was both deaf and had an impediment in his speech. It was only when his ears were opened by Jesus that he began to speak clearly. The healing of his deafness was prior to the healing of his speech impediment. 
This, I think, is a reminder to us that our ability to speak is dependent upon our capacity to hear and, most of all, to listen. Hearing comes before speaking. And this is true not only in our own regard, but in our dealings with other people. Our capacity to hear someone, to really listen to them, can be more important than anything we might say or do for them. It is one of the ways that we mediate God's creative power to others by listening attentively to them. The act of listening can be powerfully life-giving in its own right, even before we say or do anything on their behalf. When people are listened to in a non-judgmental way, they can bring and begin to come alive in new ways themselves. In light of today's readings, let us pray this Sunday for the grace to discern the ways in which the Lord may be calling each of us to be channels of his creative power in our world today. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the needs of the whole world, let us now pray to our God, who comes with salvation to make us strong and cast out all our fears. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, may it be an instrument of Christ's compassion and healing for all in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they cooperate to advance world peace and to reduce anxiety and fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers, teachers, miners, nurses, and doctors, may all whose labor betters the lives of others be blessed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the coalition forces serving throughout the world, may they be protected from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek our intercession through our book of prayer requests, may they be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, the underemployed, and the overworked, may all receive living wages for honest work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Larry West and Beverly Dominic, may they inherit the kingdom promised to those who love God. We pray to the Lord. 
For the end of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Good and gracious God, you have chosen little ones, the world's poor and lonely, to become rich in faith and to be heirs of your kingdom. Help us, despite our weaknesses, to be your comforting presence, bringing hope and consolation to a weary world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Don't sit down. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. O oh God, who gives us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting things to your divine majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so now, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Benedict, Saint Scholastica, St. Vincent de Paul, St. Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. 
peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 654, Loving and Forgiving, number 654.
Big hard feet. <clears throat> Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Let us pray.
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Please join in singing number 735, America the Beautiful, number 735.